Is there a place for dreaming? In the corners of your mind. Hello, I'm Ken Miedema, singer, songwriter, pianist, music therapist. You know what? All over this country, people who are homeless are finding places of shelter. People who are hungry are finding sources of food. People who are drug addicted are finding release from those drugs. And you know, a lot of it is happening, ta-da, in churches. And a lot of those churches are what I call small but mighty churches. Of all the things I have gotten to do in 43 years plus of singing in churches all over the country, one of my favorite things to do is to make music in small but mighty churches. Churches that do great work in their communities. And one of the foundations that holds these churches together is music. And I wanna to talk to you about helping with music in small but mighty churches. If this is not a place where my tears are understood, where shall I go? And if this is not a place where my spirit can take wings, where shall I go to fly? So we're in Port Hardy, British Columbia, way up in the northern part of British Columbia. A town that was once a rough and ready mining, logging and fishing town. All those industries are almost gone now. And here's a brave little church that buys a hotel, turns the beer hall into a worship center, lowers the alcoholism in the town by 50%, finds a place for homeless people to be sheltered, some on a short-term basis, some on a long-term basis. When I came to Port Hardy to do a concert, it was Easter weekend. And we told stories and I sang songs about what Easter could mean in Port Hardy, British Columbia. One man said, I have been considered an outcast in this town for years until I came to this warm, welcoming environment tonight. I think we built some bridges in Port Hardy, British Columbia that weekend. You believed in me and saw the best in me. And you've walked with me in the morning light. So I just want to say my thank you for all you've been and done. And I want to say again, I will do my very best. Grace Church in Grand Rapids, Michigan, is a brave experiment in creating a multi-racial congregation. One of the foundations of Grace Church is its music. It's many different colors, many different sounds, many different styles. The weekend I was there, we had a choir day on Saturday. We spent a good chunk of Saturday rehearsing new music telling stories about what choir meant to people, and letting me have a chance to tell the choir how important their work is in what the church is doing. Sunday, the church came together. People told stories about what the church meant to them. Why did they come to this place? Uh, how the church had changed their lives. It was a glorious, glorious service. Grace is a wonderful example of how music creates diversity. 
Tell me a story Spin me a tale now Take me down with you On imagination's trail Tell me a story It need not be too long And I'll sing you your own Special song The place is Newfield, Maine. You probably never heard of it. It's about an hour away from Portland. It's out in the country. It's a small church. Nine people bravely decided that they would start a church in Newfield, a church that would love its city, a church that would help their neighbors. Newfield is a town with a lot of despair and a lot of poverty. These nine people bravely bought a building, fixed it up, and now that building has become a safe haven of hope for so many people. So I was invited to come to Newfield, Maine, a little church that had obviously no financial resources. I was invited to come and do a concert. 35 to 40 people gathered in that church to tell stories, to be encouraged, to celebrate the work of God in that church. Town. Snow is falling on the ground. Here we are in this central New York town. We've got work to do. There are some things we must be seeing. The little village of Sherrill, New York. It's about an hour out of Syracuse, out in the country. It's the Sunday before Thanksgiving. It's three o'clock in the afternoon, and we've come together. Several churches have come together to put on a concert. The only admission to the concert is that you bring a non-perishable item of food to restock the local food pantry. So, a few hundred people came together, we had an afternoon of song, dance, storytelling, celebration, and a whole big pile of food for the food pantry. Thanks be to God. We're in the Riddle Church in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Some of its members have homes. Some of its members are homeless. Every Sunday afternoon, they meet to worship, pray, think, dream, strategize. And all week long, they work hard at changing the lives of people on the street, people in their neighborhood, people in their city, and to some extent, the world. Now, when I came to the Riddle Church, it was to do a concert whose goal was to bring lots of folks into their space to make people aware of what Riddle is doing. We brought people from as far away as maybe 100, 150 miles, f uh, friends of mine, people who were friends of the church, people who, do, who knew nothing about the church. We raised a considerable chunk of money to help the church in its work. One homeless man came in and said, ah, I'm not a church person. I don't go to church, but I like music. And I came to hear this music. I think I'm going to stick around. That's what happens. That's the power of music to make lives change. One, two, here you go. of your mind come dreaming with me dreaming with me admission is free well not quite 
It costs money to put on these small church music weekends, and these churches have no resources. My work in these places, and believe me, I know how powerful music can be. I've seen it, I've heard it, I've felt it over the years. My work in these places is funded by a nonprofit ministry called Interlude Retreat Corporation. Now, Interlude runs conferences and workshops, it runs retreats, but it also sends me and my music to these small churches, not only to sing for them and with them, but to help them find music resources to build their own congregational life and to create community within their own congregation, resources that they didn't think they had. It costs about $6,000, a little bit more, to put on a small but mighty church music weekend. I would love for you to be an interlude partner. There will be information available to you about our nonprofit, about how to help us make these things happen. I would love to be able to say, oh yes, that person helped me go to that particular church. I would love to put your name on some of the work that I'm doing in these exciting, exciting places. I'd love to have you come visit some one of these small churches where all this is going on. Would you consider being one of my partners? Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being you. Come dreaming with me, dreaming with me and partners.